woman is insane. She's so incredible. So I'm, I'm just scrolling one day, you know, and I see this beautiful macrame planter. Now, the reason I actually noticed is because I don't remember if it had a, if it had like writing on the graphic or not, but because of the season, I've been really thinking a lot about getting into plants and getting into planting, getting into gardening. And also because like, who knows what's going on with the world. I'm like, do I need to grow my own everything? You know, like I'm nervous. <laughs> So I was thinking about gardening and then I saw what you had posted and I was like, this is gorgeous. Let me look into this. And then I read your paragraph and I was like, what? So um, for the people watching or who will be watching later, can you tell me a little bit about sort of what you're doing and why? Yeah, I am so hyped. I'm like, thank you so much for giving me this little space to share a little bit about what I'm doing. Dude, it's so awesome. Oh my God, thank you. Um, I don't even know kind of where to start. I think like everybody else at the beginning of the coronavirus, I downplayed it kind of thing. I didn't realize how it was going to be. You know, we've, we've never really had a pandemic in my lifetime. Dude, it's the plague. So, so yeah, you know, so I don't know. So I never even Whoa. thought too much what? about that. Ooh, what am I seeing? <laughs> oh, that was good. Um, so, um, so, you know, at the beginning, I didn't think it was that serious. And then all of a sudden, stuff started getting serious. And we got quarantined. And I had all this extra time indoors. And I was just kind of getting bored a little bit, to be honest. That was like, you know. Yeah, I feel like this has been a very creative time. I'm interested in and, you know. All right, let's get Hulu. Okay, I kind of watched what I wanted in Hulu. And, you know, I was going through stuff. And um, and I just had, like, all this extra time. And I, I have a real big passion for art. I just love making art. And I do a lot of watercolors and acrylics and stuff like that. And Cool. I, but I always felt like I wanted to diversify my arts, like, my skills, I guess. But, you know, life, you're busy, work, or whatever. So then I decided that this would be the perfect time for me to get like some kind of like subscription to some kind of like art projects and learn new skills. Cause I have so Good for you. Art. I can't wait to look at your chart. <laughs> oh my God. I just so, I've been doing so much cool art. So as I was doing all these projects, one of the projects I got was to make a macrame hanger. And I had so much fun doing it and learning about the knots and doing all the ropes. And I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. And I started kind of Googling macrame hangers to see like what people were doing. Cause I was like, what other knots are out there? What styles are out there? And I remember just sitting there and thinking, oh, these are all kind of like the same thing. They're all kind of white with the like, um, the wooden rings and the wooden beads. And I was like, this totally. is I was like, how, I don't know, things have evolved so much. And I was like, how, how come macrame hangers haven't evolved that much? They all kind True of that. look kind of the same. Like, don't get me wrong, they're all beautiful. And obviously, I fell in love with it because I thought they were beautiful. But I was like, why are people not infusing, like, colors, some gold, some pizzazz into them? Hold on a second. Randy, turn your music down. <laughs> what is he, nuts? Randy. Randy, you got to Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> can you turn it down? Oh, you can hear it? Yeah. All right. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. I don't know if you guys can hear, but there was, like, a they had it right there. I was not able to focus. <laughs> she is an amazing artist. Anyway. No, but I agree, though. They've been, like, they've been, like, I've always thought of macrame plant hangers as, like, a very grandma thing. Yes! That's exactly how I felt. Hold on. Babe, can you turn that light on? Cause... Oh, my God, look. <laughs> okay, great. Now we're just screaming at our men. Men's <laughs> you were to talk to a nicer tone of voice than me. Um, I was, like, did you guys just hear me? I was, like, turn it off. <laughs> I mean, I guess I could put on headphones, too. But, you know, I put these big hoops on. Yeah, no, you look fabulous. You should have regret it. I'm trying to just Come fucking. On. He's gotta understand. Find a perform Brandy knows what's up. Brandy knows what's up. <laughs> um, but I totally agree. Right. So macrame is like so boring for grandmas. Yes. It's the only people that like hung out at Caldor. It was really just like an old lady on the porch thing. I agree. I agree. <laughs> and I was like, what is happening? So I remember just sitting there and thinking, like, if I would do macrames, I would make them with color. I would love like little geometric pieces and I'm gold and I would love to do all of this oh, stuff. Yeah. Just make them fabulous, you know? Um, obviously, I'm all into the gram, so I would obviously want them to be, like, gram-worthy kind of thing. Well, dude, you're actually, like, so good at the gram. Do you know that, you know, you're, like, you if you want to, like, redo any, like, all of my shit, please. I'm just, like, <laughs> sloppy and out here talking. That's, like, when, when the world was on stage, it was, like, I'll just show up and talk, whatever. Now I, like, have, like, to do, like, 
aesthetics. That's why I'm like, what should I do? I was just panicking. I'm like, I can't go out with a mosquito net. I panic over aesthetics. And I feel like you have like the gram of like a celebrity okay. without actually being a celebrity I or <laughs> showing your ass all the time. Like you actually are just like a classy, creative, talented person who just has it like with it enough to create like brand recognition for yourself and for your macrame project on the gram. So like you got, you got skills, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're mad cool. Oh, thanks. I must be so you started doing cool. them. <laughs> oh, dude. No, beyond, beyond. No, no, you're the coolest. No, she's the beyond. I, we're going to read her chart in a second. I'm going to tell you everything okay. because, well, up to you. All I don't right, want so to I'll, I'll fast forward. I'll, I'll well, no, no, take your time because I also okay. want to know. Yeah, so please, please. We have, I yeah, have basically, nothing Basically, I sat there and I thought about all these amazing things I would do. And then, like, life happens and I just moved on and kept doing other projects and whatnot. And coronavirus, you know, we, we were getting further into the quarantine. And I, my parents live in Ecuador. My parents retired and they live in a tiny beach town in Ecuador that is... I think maybe has like maybe a thousand people living there tops. It's like wow. a very small town. Um, there's actually, uh, so Ecuador is actually one of the biggest places for retiree, for American retirees to go retire because it's so cheap and affordable. So oh. there's actually a lot of community of American expats in Ecuador and a whole bunch of cool. them this tiny town where my parents retired. So when the pandemic hit, at the beginning, you know, everybody quarantined. But what happened was that because it was a beach town, people from the cities started coming to the beach town uh, to quarantine. But the problem is that, um, so the coronavirus apparently hit Ecuador almost a whole month earlier than it hit, that, that we were aware. Why? It was happening, right? Because right, I guess it was happening, happening everywhere. Happening, we just became aware in March, right? As like the world, America and everybody else kind of thing. But it had been going on. So what happens is that back in the day, I think when I, when I was a kid, maybe like 1998, 99, the economy in Ecuador collapsed. And about 2 million people emigrated and went to either the US or Europe. And a whole bunch of them ended up in Spain and Italy. So we have a large um, diaspora of people living in Spain and Italy that now come in and vacation in Ecuador. And for us, January, February, March is the, is the summertime. Everybody comes back home to, to vacation. So we actually had people that were sick that came in February already. Oh, because it's but a travel destination. Know. Yes. Damn. But we Damn. didn't know. So now you are bringing all these people that are sick into a country that already has a poor healthcare industry that is yeah. not prepared to deal with something like this. Yeah. And then you add the fact that it's a third world country with high degrees of inequality, and it's just a recipe for disaster, especially for the poor people who end up being like 60 to 70% of the population. So scary. Yes. And the situation got so bad that basically uh, they, I guess the healthcare industry and whoever's managing uh, the pickup of the bodies when people die, they were they had so many bodies that they weren't getting to people on time. And people were because it's a tropical country, people were scared of being stuck indoors with your loved oh, one. Oh no! They can die of coronavirus. So, oh no! So yeah, so people were having to make this super tough choice of having to dispose of their loved ones out on the street because they didn't want to sit there with a rotting body that I mean has what family. you're saying is so fucking crazy to just like when, a jap from New York City like can you imagine imagine that like when I read that I sort of got I just felt like I got sucker punched I was like I can't like I never thought that people were would be put in the situation like I guess, like, when you think about the plague, like, back in the day, maybe. Right. But, like, it's the 21st century. Like, how do we not have the systems in place to take care of this? But also, nobody imagines a mass pandemic is going to happen right now. It's really wild. And it's it, it's really, like, yeah, I mean, we have such a, like, an insular vision of uh, 
you know, our experience, I think just like as Americans and I mean, probably I, I can't speak for anybody else, but as an American, we just think that this is the world and that we are the most important and we are the center of the world. And we really don't think about any other country. And so it was so interesting. To, I mean, that, we think about other countries. We want to, we hate China now, I guess. So we, you know, we think about where to, we, we want to go to Tulum. We think about other countries. Yeah. But it's just like, it's just, it's, it's, it's so crazy. Like we are here complaining about our healthcare system, which is fucked up, but then it's like, Oh, your friends and family in Ecuador may or may not have to figure out who's going to carry grandma's head or who's going to carry grandma's ass out to what the dumpster or they're going to yeah, I mean, that's what that is like too, like, like I can't, level of, of disaster, you know what I mean? It's so sad. I know. And then when I thought, you know, when I realized that it was that bad, I was like, I have to do something, but what can I do? You know, uh, I was like, of course, I can donate money, but I, of course, and I, of course, did donate money, but also no matter how much I can donate, it's always like a limited quantity, right? So then I said, well, there has, why don't I get creative? There has to be more that I can do. So then I was, I just sat there and I was thinking, and I was like, I have to find a way to raise money, right? So then I was like, okay, and what do I do? So then I was like, maybe. Maybe I can apply like a skill, something that I know, something that I can make and kind of leverage that my community and my friends and the people that I work with to be able to do something larger than I would, what I could do by myself, right? So like trying to find my community and build something. So I said, well, I really enjoy doing macrames and it's like springtime and it's like you said, it's the, plan for, it's the time for plants and, you know, the weather's great. So I was like, why don't I make some of these? You know, I can invest... I don't know, like 50 or 100 bucks in materials. But if I can turn 50 to 100 bucks in a to $1,000, that is a meaningful difference in other people's lives. And when you said this statistic in your post, you were like, what was it like $1,000? It said like, like 30, 30 people? For, me for an entire month. For an entire month. I mean, the money, the global it's, money like situation is such a problem. That's just, that's so crazy. I know. I would never be able. I, I'm. It's an outing for me to go out to dinner for thirty bucks, and you could feed an entire family for an entire month. You could be that change in their livelihood. It's no, crazy. I literally, I literally have like eighty-seven dollars, like at any given time, and we have, and there's lavender cheese spread. <laughs> I I buy lavender cheese spread and uh, really aged manchego. Uh, yep. So we are we have fucked up ideas about like. Right, how we're spending money, what's important. And then to think that, like, actually, like, we're, not only are we just throwing away money, but that, like, there are so many people, not only, like, yes, the poor people in our country are the worst. No, just kidding. The poor <laughs> people in our country uh, need help, including, you know, my community, everybody's community. But also, um, that's not even, like, I mean, when you're saying that $1,000 could feed 30 families for a month, it's like, oh, you guys, we actually can help. It's not the kind of thing that's like, wow, well, this is so out of our league. That no, it's a couple really of coffees. It's one dinner, stay home one night, and maybe rummaging through the fridge and seeing what's in the freezer and just, you know, 30 bucks. And Dude. I'm happy to give you a plant hanger if you want to donate, you know, whatever works, whatever makes your heart happy. Yeah. Macrame. Yeah, how do these things work? So, um... Oh! Basically, um, it's so good. You have, like, I have a nice gold ring, a nice le leather binding there, a little strap. This, um, this one has little gold accents the right corners. there. Corners, dude. Yeah, that's like not what they look like. So yeah, so this one is actually kind of basic, bitch, because it's white. <laughs> I mean. But I also got some other cool colors. So, oh, I love this one actually. Check this one out. This one's green, but this one has a little phrase that Whoa! I love. Whoa! Love! Says, and wait, does that say work? Or are these just, what are these, uh, what do the beads have? It says life is good. I guess oh the, my the, God. The, are you the cutest? Yes, that's like a little phrase. Wait, you could do like, um, for a higher price, you could do custom ones where people like write names and stuff. Yeah, I would love to do that. So um, I had a few ideas. Can I do commissioned macrame? Of course. 
Because I, I was thinking. Love, you know what? I love that you went there because I was thinking that would be the next level. Like, I've been telling my friends, like, <laughs> I can get other cores. Like, I can do stuff for you. I keep, I keep trying to like, I keep trying to wave at people and then flip the camera and then it's just oh like God. a half a piece and my boyfriend. Well, oh, sorry. Um, no, IG Live is like my new favorite thing though because it's like all about like what's really going on in the moment. Like there's no like, there's no polish. There's no frill here. We're just a little bit dysfunctional, but trying to help, you know? Um, but I think that's brilliant. You have a heart of gold. You have from the moment I met you and I'm so glad that we, thank God you came to my show. I mean, not that, I mean, you I know, know. I'm maybe... so happy we connected because I was like, will she remember me? It's been a while. <laughs> but I remember you. No, I was like, no, when you meet a soul sister, you know, you don't forget her. You're like, oh, I remember you from the other planet. And when you gave, I have to look up your chart, but you are a Gemini. I'm a Gemini rising. So we have a Gemini. Oh my God, yeah, I'm Gemini's... so excited about this. I've been the Geminis to... know what to do. Like, Gemini's in a crisis, get crafty. So like, here we are on Instagram Live. I've never did this before the pandemic. We're selling your macrame stuff. I'm about to pitch you some some ideas that I think, I don't know, you know. Take I'm excited. Talk them. to me, girl. <laughs> okay, so um, thing number one that I was thinking. Okay, I don't even know how. I want to be clear. I'm actually not an artist, and I don't know how, like, engineering works. Like, maybe, you know, these aren't, like, this isn't the best, but, you know, I'll see what I, what I can come up with, okay? But so the two ones, I, I had three, but I had two that I really thought were good. Okay, number one. Could you do like a portable like hammock? Is there any way to like macrame something that I could like lay out on wherever I go? Yeah. Don't say no. We'll figure it out. We can figure the it out. Second thing I was thinking. Sex swings. Okay. That's interesting. But don't you think that they get a little dirty with the rope? I bet the well, material that they use for sex swings is like washable. Well, I, I feel like pilot. we gotta get a Velcro pad on the bottom. Because when I saw that plant hanger, I thought, could my little leggies fit through these holes? Yeah, uh, yes, they can. <laughs> the answer, you know, <laughs> my concern and then at this the cleanliness. <laughs> well, right, dirty is good as long as it's washable. I mean, yeah, we don't want ro the rope needs to be washable, or or it needs to be maybe a sp wait, 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 wait. I got a girl who's doing skincare products from her kitchen. I bet she can make a, a sex cleaning spray for the macrame. Okay, well, we'll collaborate. I like that. <laughs> and the last thing is, um, now this is a personal question. I don't, I really don't know how like macrame works or science or whatever, but um, if there's a way to do like heavy macrame curtains that I could like, so like next time I go like this, oops, what if there was just a huge macrame? Oh hanger? my gosh, yes, there is. You know, like instead of a tapestry. Yes, there is. And I actually been thinking about doing one. Are you really interested in that? Because like super soul sisters right now. Okay, it's okay. Can can we be vulnerable online right now? Yeah. Huh. You don't think I wanna okay, so I need a wall there. And look, these are my scarves that are putting a wall between this like thing and the okay, window okay. so that people can't see us when we fuck. So, uh, I like, I could use some partitions, but let me tell you, the partition game is, is dire. Partitions are so expensive. Yes, they are. It's crazy. So then I was like, okay, maybe if I can just like hang something from the, the ceiling, but then curtains, there's always like a heavy rod or a heavy thing, or just, I don't know. There's like a lot of like fuss that goes with it. It's like not that easy. Like I kind of just want a tapestry to throw over this thing, you know, or just yeah, like, so are they hanging on? What are you? Are so they're hanging on just like a pipe. So on a pipe, they have, there's all these like exposed pipes in here. Okay. Okay. So like something could hang like off of that pipe or like the ceiling is wood, but like, it's just, you know, I could use, I could use some privacy. This is a little studio could, apartment. We could, uh, I could make something that you could tie on top of the pipe. Done and, and done. Awesome. That's exactly what we're looking for. Yes. All right, yes. I'll send you some measurements later. Okay, I'm in. I will send you the money. This is a custom project. I will send it to Ecuador. Keep a little for yourself, but send it to Ecuador. I'll tell everybody. I also want to say, side note, I also want a sex swing. Okay, I got to figure <laughs> out how to make one of those. I think that's like genius. And, I, and it, might be, it might be hard on the face. I mean, macrame for a mask just wouldn't work, I guess. It just, it wouldn't work. For a mask? It wouldn't work. 
<laughs> could you mask? Could you mask? Right? Masks for COVID? <laughs> Wouldn't that be so funny if you did that? We should do a prank thing. Wait, Christina. Nobody. Okay, if you're here, don't don't spill the beans. But maybe this is funny. Is it funny if we redo this like next week? Like Christina's doing this amazing thing for COVID nineteen, and you do a mask, but it has like all the holes. You know, because it's not really like it's actually not. It's a horrible idea. So we could like put it up and be like, this is like so amazing. All the money's gonna go to Ecuador. She's sending tons of these to Ecuador and just see just see how long it takes people to be like, uh is it a joke? Like, <laughs> this is a terrible idea. We should just do it and say like let people get really upset and be like, lol, we're kidding, but we are doing macrame, plant hanging, <laughs> tapestries, and sex swings.